Zach Simeone with the new Zulu News Update. The chaos in Baltimore following the death of Freddie Gray died down on Tuesday night, with the mayor enforcing a 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. curfew to control rioting. Community members spoke out against the looting and violence from the previous evening, which left the city torched and several officers injured. Protesters initially disobeyed the curfew, laying down in the street, but with thousands of police officers and National Guardsmen present, they were confronted with tear gas and pepper balls and quickly dispersed. At the same time, more than 800 miles away in Ferguson, protesters expressed solidarity with Baltimore and Freddie Gray. These protests too turned violent as trash cans and other items were set alight and demonstrators clashed with police. Two individuals were shot in separate incidents, according to CNN, though police have yet to confirm any connection between the shootings and the riots. Aid is now reaching earthquake victims in Nepal as the death toll exceeds 5,000. Many survivors have been living at makeshift campsites in the days following. This contributor's drone footage from Tuesday shows one site in Chutapati, northeast of Kathmandu. Many are reportedly afraid to go inside due to aftershocks, which some fear might continue for years. Indonesia is facing international criticism after the execution of Australian nationals Andrew Chan and Muran Sukumaran of the Bali 9 drug smuggling ring. They and six others received the death penalty and were executed by firing squad Wednesday. International appeals to pardon them fell on deaf ears in spite of their transformations in prison. Chan was ordained as a minister and Sukumaran became a passionate painter. Their bodies have now arrived in Jakarta and will be transported from there back to Australia. Prime Minister Tony Abbott called the executions cruel and unnecessary, and Australia's ambassador to Indonesia has been recalled. One person, Filipina Mary Jane Veloso, was spared from execution, though it is unclear why. She had been on death row since 2010 after she was found with heroin in her suitcase at an Indonesian airport. Veloso maintained her innocence from the time of her arrest and, like Chan and Sukumaran, also gained international sympathy. Reports indicate that she will be returned to a prison in central Java. Though she may have lost her freedom, she will keep her life. For New Zulu, this is Zach Simeon reporting.